It's me, it's me, it's the ASG. But you'll never be as ravishing as me. So why don't you do the next best thing and click subscribe so you can watch more of me. Don't know dick. Ladies and gentlemen, the lights are on, the camera is rolling, and you are here for another episode of Dick Tube. I am Dick Williams, and I am back finally after that previous injustice. But I, you know, today it is about me, but it's not about me because I learned something recently that while I've had pretty much every gift a person could ask for, brains, athleticism, looks, the whole package, that I've been so focused on me, it's time for me to give some of that back, to, to make things better for the rest of WWT. I've been the onslaught, now I'm the onslaught. I'm going to give back to the little man the stupid man, the, the, the incomplete guy who just doesn't have anything going on for him. I think I can help. And with that in mind, I'd like to bring out my very first guest, ladies and gentlemen, Mike James. <laughs> to be out here. Oh man, I'm excited to be here. It's been a while, man, I haven't seen you. How you been? We told you you wouldn't be on the show. Well, I must have knocked up the message. You know, Mama Jay's you know, it's, with it's, phone calls. You know what, it's, you're excited to see me. I'm, oh, I'm so excited. I'm acknowledging you. It, I mean, it's, it's great. Um, but we've got a lot to talk about, Mike. Okay. There's been a lot happening in your life. Yeah. I mean, ever since I made it my mission to strap that rocket ship to your back and make you get to the top when I gave you that ball, which gave yeah. you the chance at title after title opportunity. And Mike, you keep failing. I know. I, I know I came up short a couple times. Short, yeah. But it was no coming up short because I see it in other people, not me. I'm a former champion. Yeah, I was just you wasn't hard. I just wasn't hard enough, Mike, Dick. I know, Mike. And see, that's what I want to talk to you about. Is I think you still have it in you. I you do. have the potential for greatness, Mike. And if not greatness, something a few rungs below, but still better than where you are now. I, how above? Above the well, that doesn't the matter. Seam? Here's you right now. And if I could go below the ring, I'd find it. I mean, you, you've had a lot of... You baby steps, man! Baby steps. I can get you back to the top, Mike. See, the problem is, there's a big, gigantic, great ape holding you down. Mega Mondo is... He's climbing, man. You see him on Twitter. You see him on videos. You see him... You see the fans chanting his name. He's everywhere. And yes, all the while, there's Mike James, a footnote in the Mega Mondo story. He's using you, Mike. What? These could be your opportunities. People, you love Mike James. They, yeah. I have seen Mike James do things that I kind of like. I mean, we are all cheering for you. And there's one man holding you down, keeping you out of the places you should be. And that's Mega Mondo. But, but it wasn't Mondo's fault in the tag match. It was a mistake. He was going for Stone That's Pain. what he wants you to think, Mike. Where did the shoulder block come from? 
You rage. Lost I don't know. You got I felt it when I was watching. I was looking at my TV, my very big screen TV, and saying, "Mike James is going to do this. He's going to capture the moment. He's going to grab that brass ring, and then he's going to pound Stone Pain over the head with it after he has that next opportunity." But no, Mega Mondo saw that too, Mike. Mega Mondo saw it, and then he buried you purposefully, shoving you down while he was still going up. I mean, I don't agree with a word Stone Pain has ever said, but he finally has a point when he says Mega Mondo is a fraud. Fraud. You could probably, you know what that is, right? When I say that? Fraud means like a. Make believe? A got, yeah. Like a unicorn? Those aren't make believe. Okay. So he's, he's fake. He's holding you down. He's a phony. He's telling you one thing, he's doing another. Mike, you need a little dick inside you. You need what I can give you, which I is need, some knowledge, some ways to think about things, to look at the world, to decide so, what is right and what is wrong and what Mike James should do to climb that ladder of success. So, so what you're saying is I need dick. Absolutely. You need me more than I need you. I and I'm willing need to give you dick. dick. Yes. I need dick. Now, don't start a chant yet, because there's still a lot of things you have to do, like throwing out that 300 dead pounds of dead weight holding you down. Yeah. Mega Mondo. He's not your friend, you, you, Mike. You know, maybe, you know how I can prove maybe it? Maybe you're right. I can prove it. How? If Mega Mondo was your friend, he would come out and defend himself right now. He would come out and tell you, He's here your face. We're going to see. We're going to see if he comes out and says, Mike James, I'm not a fraud. Oh. I'm really your friend, and I yeah. care about you as a player. Yeah, I want to hear from Wando's. Mega you, come Mondo. Come on, buddy. Come on, I know you're here. The world come wants on. to hear that you're not a fraud and how okay, much Wando, you care I'm about Mike James. Come on, tell me the truth. Just want to know the truth. I don't hear that god awful music, do you? Sometimes he, he takes a minute. He likes to scream and get Maybe wild up pouring, in the back. He might be pouring himself another jungle juice, Mondo <sighs> juice, whatever he calls it, but he ain't here. He's coming. He won't he you won't know, let his good buddy down. You know who's here right now? Me. And I'm going to give you something to think about. Because I know probably visual cues help you and, and there's a I won't say a lot going on in there, but there's something happening inside there, and I want to focus it. Look, right here. A little Miss Dick. A new Dick Duck for you. D. Dee Dee? Dee Dee? Dee Dee. I want you to take that mic. And I want you to think about what I said about Mega Mondo. I want you to here, think about here. D. Yeah, that's all yours. D. I I knew you'd be excited. Maybe not this much. Oh, G. G's gonna get D. Yeah. G's gonna get D. Mondo never got your presence. Ah. Uh, oh, I love Dick. Okay. So that went great, but now that that unpleasantness is behind us, I have a few more things I'd like to say. And I'm gonna start... No! Isn't it funny what desire makes foolish people do? The desire to be crowned champion the desire to be a hero, the desire to prove yourself to be something more than just a loser. You see, that desire has now put three people in a very bad place. Jackson Rathbone, I stand here without my championship, not because you earned it, no, but because you legitimately stole it from me. And now you parade around claiming that you are the rightful king of the Smash Mouth jungle, and it makes me physically sick to my stomach. And then, and then you've got Mega Mondo, a fraud 
who has somehow tricked the world into believing that he's some sort of superhero. Mondo, I have cracked your image. I have left you laying twice, and I have shown the world and your closest friends a glimpse into your true nature. But if you wanna keep picking this fight, then so be it, but what comes next is on your head. And last but not least, my old friend, Mike James. Mike, I don't know how many times I've gotta teach you this lesson, but if I've gotta do it another, then I guess class is in session. So what does this all mean? I'll tell you what it means. It means that I want all doubters to be damned. It means that I want to bury all of my enemies in one foul swoop. It means that I want what's mine and I will go to depths that you can't even dream of to achieve it. You see, I've already gotten the go ahead. So here's my little announcement. Jackson Rathbone, you bring your piggly son of a bitch ass to the Smash Mouth Arena at Showcase 14, and you bring my championship. Mega Mondo, you crawl yourself in to my kingdom at Showcase 14, and I promise you, I will shatter your unbreakable image permanently. And Mike, Mike, you can show up too because I'm just not gonna turn down the opportunity to punch you in the face. So what this all means is it's gonna be Stone Pain defending my WWT Championship throne against Jackson Rathbone, Mega Mondo, and Mike James in a fatal four-way. Everybody wants thy kingdom, but what they fail to realize is thy kingdom come with a ball and chain, and I am swinging it with fatal intent. The world wants to believe that the end of Stone Pain's reign is imminent. No. The only thing that's imminent is me piling up the carcasses of all my enemies and standing atop it, beaming in the spotlight of my finest moment yet. And in that spotlight, the world at long last will bow before the king. Oh my, what a major announcement. Can you believe it, Dodger Obencrust? How you feeling after that? I'm feeling like I better have ambulances on standby. Are you kidding me, Don? A fatal four-way for the WWT Championship. You know that one is going to be an all-out war. And speaking of wars, we are set for a very personal war that's going to be waged right here tonight. It's Isvan and McLaw in the long-awaited hope on a pole. There have been a lot of chapters to this book, but this should be the final one. It's been a page-turner, but looking forward to seeing how it ends. And there she is, the star of tonight's showcase, looking like an angel beaming down from the heavens above. As the pride and joy of Unten Tag makes his way to the ring for WWT's first ever pole match, let me take you through the rules. The match can end by pinfall and or submission. However, if one man decides to climb the pole and retrieve the hope that hangs above, he can legally use that ukulele as a weapon. Oh my! 
this could get ugly. Now we've seen the claw use that hope to beat the tar out of Isvan in the past, actually costing him a match. But it's legal now if he can get his hands on it. The Schnitzel Slinger looks laser focused. Isvan in good form, strutting his stuff, his schnitzel, slinging all over the ring. But his opponent's here too for the first time in a Smash Mouth ring in quite some time. Looking forward to seeing McLaw in action. Tim McLaw's slogan is the law always wins. However, when it comes to the Gustenschlamans, the law has been jailbroke. Tim McLaw has never scored a victory over any member of the Gustenschlaman family. And you gotta know that tonight, the man on the marquee has high hopes of doing the one thing that he's never been able to do. Flash Mouse. Arena's own maestro getting ready to conduct the sound. Oh no, he's not. It could be an end to a, a, a short story right here. The referee rang the bell before McLaw was ready, and Isfahn has capitalized with a double dose of shotgun drop kicks. You can see there's no love loss here. Isfahn looking to end it early. Oh, and a third drop kick right to the sternum of McLaw. And Isvan is looking hotter than an Untentagi and Wiener roast. Oh, God, and now Isvan with just stiff kicks right to the spine of McLaw. Those Frankfurter-like feet are flying. Hitting McLaw all over his body, putting the music man in the corner and beating the snot out of him right now. God, Isvan will just not let up the attack. Sausage like fists. This is a long time coming, Tim. Isvan with a word of warning to McLaw, telling him it's almost over. Oh, and Isvan throwing all 190 pounds right into the face of McLaw. One, two, it's over. Oh, no, McLaw somehow finds some inner strength to get out of there. And much like at the Greenwood International Airport, Tim McLaw has to escape the fury of the red and yellow Untentagi and Dragon. Only this time he doesn't have his Porsche to ensure that he gets away. Well, and you can tell Isfahn's one of the most technically sound members of our roster. And there has been nothing technical so far. It's just been a full-on street fight as he's been taking it to McLaw. Oh, wait a minute, I think Isfahn might be getting ready to climb up for hope here. Oh, no, wait. Oh, in the words of Admiral Akbar, Don, it's a trap. Baited him into it, trying to get McLaw to stop playing possum and, and actually throw some fisticuffs here. Oh, Isfahn ducked it and McLaw is climbing. And, oh, no, wait, Isfahn stopped him and McLaw gets hung up hard. Getting caught up in the ropes. Oh, pump schnitzel kick right to the chin, and McLaw might be out. Two, two and oh, I thought that boot was going to end it. The beatdown continues. Man, Isvan was mere seconds away from putting an exclamation point on this rivalry. And McLaw has still hasn't even gotten out of his entrance gear yet. I mean, Isvan has been pedal to the metal the entire time. Look at that European slap right across the chest of McLaw. Isvan looking to light McLaw brighter than the cover of his Christmas album. Oh, and now he just launches the man on the marquee across yeah. the ring. You like that? You like that? No. Oh, that was a pointed kick right to the ribs. Yeah. The ribs, I'm, I'm even more hungry now. Eat some turnbuckle. Speaking of hungry, McLaw face first into this the middle rope turnbuckle. Got even the referee had to pull Isvan off. I mean, I, I know this is a personal matter for Isvan and his family, but you got Owen oh, there. It was right there. Isvan's emotions overcame him, and McLaw took advantage. Yeah, how about a second helping? Oh my God! Oh, McLaw looking to drive Isfahn's face right through the mat. One, two with a surprise victory. No. 
Oh man, I don't know how Isfahn kicked out of that. Isfahn's learning, you cannot give McClaw an opening. He is a cagey veteran, as cagey as they come. The man knows how to win. Man, Isfahn took two hard shots right to the head. Don't mean Tim McClaw meets trademark because I'm the man that made it. I set the bar for a trademark. McGlaw's been playing mind games with him for months now, Dodge. I don't think Isfahn can focus fully. I think he's got revenge on the brain, and that's all that matters. Speaking of on the brain, we could have hope on the brain. Oh, what's McGlaw doing? Isfahn playing some mind games of his own, and McGlaw's going to put him down. Oh, no, wait, Isfahn! He ducked it, and they both tumbled to the floor. I think McGlaw's head might have hit those ropes on the way out, scrambled a few musical notes up there. Isvon, McGlaw, both down on the outside of the ring. One of them's got to get to that ukulele to do some more damage. Who will it be? And getting to the ukulele, I think that's what's on both of their minds. Is Oh, as Isvon just tosses McGlaw's hat across the floor like a piece of trash. You know, and that's a nice hat, too. It's got to be probably worth more than my entire outfit. And now both men with their sights set on the same thing, looking to climb to the top. No. Dangerous territory. No. This fly because no. they know whoever grabs that ukulele no. horse is going to have a sure fire advantage to close no. out this match. God, look no. at the bombs no. that these two are no. throwing at each other, no. Don. This is nothing but a fist fight. McGlaw's got the high ground swinging from, you know, swinging downhill on the cranium of Isvan. Both men are in the high rent district here, just inches away from hope as they continue to just swing and batter each other. McGlaw, Isvan battling away. And oh, wow! Isvan and McGlaw both took the tumble, and Isvan hit his head hard. You can almost see the weenies floating around his cranium as he struggles, as little birds fly, trying to get his concentration back. Man, there is no doubt that Isfahn got the worst of that exchange. McLaw struggling to his feet. McLaw needs to take advantage. This might be the best opportunity he's had all match. Trying once again to climb that mountain up to his beloved hope. McLaw is there, he's just inches away from it. Oh no, wait, there's Isfahn, and oh man, Isfahn is limping. You gotta wonder if he hurt his ankle on that fall. I think he did, he doesn't look right, Dodge. Yeah, look at that, Isfahn couldn't even support the weight of McLaw on his shoulders. And now, oh my God, wait a minute, McLaw just hit the lawbreaker. Right to the face, this could be it, one, two. Oh God, how close was that? I thought McLaw had broken his goose and slamming streak right there. Man, you gotta wonder what that does to the psyche of Tim McLaw. He just hit his best shot, and Isvan kicked out. And yeah, yeah, Isvan is hurt. Look, he is still grasping that ankle. I thought they were warming up the limo after that shot, because it was gonna be a quick exit. Hope in hand, back to the jet. McLaw finally gets the shirt off. Ready to end it, Isvan. Seeing stars, not knowing where he is. Isvan is rocked. He has taken multiple headshots in this match. Scrambled schnitzel behind those eyes. Oh, McLaw. McLaw's looking to play the final note in this symphony of destruction. And no, Isvan ducked it. Gushtin slam. And McLaw is down. He's down, he's down. I, there's no way he's getting up from that. Isvan's just got to crawl over. Put us all out of our misery. Isvan, one, two, he's done it all. And now it's McLaw's turn to kick out. And that look of bewilderment is stretched across the face of Isvan. Eight hours from now, when Utentag's up watching this, they're gonna have their hearts broken right there because it should have ended. And now Isfahn firing up and oh! Oh, sweet kick! Spinning schnitzel kick cracks the back of the man from Bel Air and Isfahn has his sight set high on hope. Sounded like a xylophone playing all those vertebrae ringing out in pain. Isfahn is slowly making the climb. And he's there. Isvan is in the promised land. No hope for Isvan yet. 
The claw fighting, grabbing, slamming down. Massive power bomb by McLaw drives this one into the canvas. Every move is a bit of desperation for McLaw as he's taken the brunt of most of the punishment. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, what a counter. It's fun into the schnitzel stretch. Oh, that looked like a tap. That looked like a tap to me, Dodge. I think he's out. I think he wants to quit. No way, Isfahn is, he's stepping on the hand of McLaw, McLaw can't make the tap! Trying to end it again the way it all began, Isfahn putting the screws to McLaw! This is how McLaw lost the two out of three falls match! He doesn't want him to tap out, Dodge. He wants him to feel this. And my god, look at the torque! on the neck and the shoulder of the man on the marquee. I have never seen a man keep his opponent from tapping on purpose to dish out pain. I think McLaw is out. The hatred that these two men have for one another is otherworldly and Isfahn spits in the face of McLaw. Isfahn showing a mean streak unlike I've ever seen before. Makes you wonder what's next. Isfahn could go to the cover, but I think he has more evil intentions in mind. Well, it's about to be a, a ukulele fight if Isfahn can make it over to that pole. We might hear one last song, and it could be McClaw's brain cracking and splitting in half. I think this is it, Don. Isfahn is there. Isfahn has his hands on hope. The name of that tune may be victory if he can get that instrument turn around and put it to good use. Well, what's happening? Is he, did he not read the rules before he got here? Oh, he's taking the whole pole. My God, Isfahn just snapped the pole in half. Well, that's one way to do it. Isfahn, any means that now Dodge, can he use the pole? Is that part of the, is, it legal? is that legal too? It's well, well, the referee said it was allowed and oh, Isfahn with steel pole in hand, soars across the ring and drills McLaw right in the face. Well, that changes everything. Now, not, I mean, who needs the ukulele when you've got a steel pole now? Isfahn using everything at his disposal. And, and now Isfahn is going for hope. I don't think Isfahn is done, Don. Oh, no. Isfahn is looking to put the Gushtin Schlum and stamp on this rivalry and possibly across the cranium of McLaw. It's 50 years in some making. This is it. Isfahn, look at, oh no! Oh, McLaw went low with the pole and just hit Isfahn right in the wiener schnitzel. He's gonna feel that for a long, long time. McLaw getting ready to play his favorite song with hope at the ready. Oh my God! What song was that? That is bone crushing. For the love, that has got One, to be it. Two. And McLaw has finally done it. He has finally put to bed the Goosh and Schlum in name. It took every part of the ring and every ounce of will he had, but McLaw has done it, slain the Goosh and Schlamen Dragon. A performance 50 years in the making. McLaw just delivered a smash hit. Another hit single with emphasis on it. The man on the marquee's name is up in lights, and the Gushtin Schlamen name is face down in the dirt. While McGraw gloats, Isfahn lying out in a heap. And, and Isfahn is her. We need somebody out here to help Isfahn. He may be concussed, he may have a broken ankle, and who knows what else. And it begs the question, where do both men go from here after this long rivalry seemingly has come to an end in a bittersweet way? Thanks again, everyone, for joining us. Make sure to like and subscribe the video you just saw so you can see more from WWT.